Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of the Global Reality. I'm your host, Josh Reeves. This is the Tuesday, May 29th, 2018 edition of the broadcast. Thank you very much for joining me here again for another show and another week of shows here. And uh, we've got a lot to talk about tonight. I've got a lot of news and a lot of uh, a lot of topics, a lot of things to get into with you here on the show tonight. So I'm ready to get into it, jump into it with you all. I hope you had, uh, if you're in the United States, I hope you had a nice weekend. I hope you had a nice holiday weekend. In the, here, in, if you were uh, in the United States, if you're not in the United States, we have this thing here. They call it Memorial Day. Um, I, you know, it's weird. I never, this is the first year I've ever seen people getting butthurt about Memorial Day on, on the internet before. Kind of a strange phenomenon. Um, we have all kinds of silly fucking holidays. Everybody's got them. I mean, you know, every country's got them, but, um, Memorial Day is supposed to be in remembrance of people who died in wars and stuff who were Americans who died in wars in, uh, but of course, like anything else, what it really has become officially because they, a lot of times they time, you know, not always, but a lot, oftentimes they'll, um, the end of the school year happens around Memorial day. So it's, it's become the official kickoff weekend to summer for, you know, for everybody here in the United States. But I got to tell you, uh, you know, I just, I don't know. I've never seen people, people getting butthurt about it like I saw this time. Like a whole lot of people. Very strange. Um, you know, people, oftentimes people, know, especially in this day and age, you don't fucking know what these things. It's kind of like people getting butthurt about Christmas. It's kind of silly to me. People getting butthurt about Christmas. You always have that, you know, you always got that one asshole. Well, this is Jesus' birthday. It's not supposed to be about gifts and this, that. Yeah, yeah, fucking maybe so. But guess what, dude? That got log lost a long fucking time ago, and it ain't coming back. Now it's a fucking, uh, you know, buffer for the fourth, for quarter four. You know, it's a quarter four buffer for the fucking corporations and everything. I mean, like everything. I mean, all the holidays, you know, you got these, uh, then we've got these other ones throughout the year. We've got fucking, uh, I hate them all. What do we got? We got fucking. So you get through Christmas, right? You get through New Year's. And then you got like a month of the new year. And then before you know it, you got a fucking, uh, what do you call it? A fucking Catholic. You got St. Valentine's Day. Ugh. You know, and I've talked about lots of these holidays and done shows on them throughout the years, you know, talking about the pagan fertility rituals. And one of my favorite bits I ever did, I think it might be one of the funniest rants things that I did online or something, but I think it is. And one of my favorite bits that I ever did, uh, I swear to God, people are right those of you out there that said I should be in stand-up comedy, I fucking should, but how do you, you know, how do you go, how do I get into that, it, you know, at my age and this stage in the game, but some you're right, though, I I, have to, I never thought about that either, just like I never thought about doing a show either, I never thought about doing a radio show. I didn't wake up one day and go, God, you know, I, I think I should do a radio show. That didn't happen like that. It, yeah, I never even thought about it, never wanted to do it. Somebody said, you know what, you should do a radio show. And I went, you know what? God damn it, you're right. I should. And that's how it started. <laughs> but uh, I know one of my favorite bits I ever did was about <laughs> reading this article about Valentine's Day and about you know exactly the same thing I'm talking about here with Memorial Day or Christmas or any of these other things. How they, you know, none of these things, none of these things are in any way, shape, or form what they, you know, are now what they used to be or what they were originally based on. So being butthurt about it and crying about, oh, Christmas is supposed to be about Jesus' birthday, you know, this, that, look, man, you got fucking people out there that ain't even fucking Christians that celebrate. You got Jews that celebrate Christmas and shit. 
because it's become something else, you know, other than it be, and everybody just accepts that and moves on. Yes, we understand it's not, but again, every fucking one of these holidays is like that. But the, I'll tell you what, my favorite bits I ever did was on Valentine's Day and how about how, you know, originally, you know, how when you were at school or whatever, you know, you'd have your box of Valentines and you have your box, you make your Valentine, and everybody, you know, people put their little Valentines in there or whatever. Well, how that originally was is that, um, I think I guess the guy, I'm trying to remember, I don't remember all the details. But I guess guys would make the boxes up, or I don't remember how it would work, or vice, one of them. But essentially, like, uh, guys would get a bunch of different women's names in the in their box, right? It was like a, you know, it's one of the fertility ritual things. Just like Easter is a fucking fertility ritual, all that bullshit. The pagans, man, the Christians stole all that stuff lock, stock, and barrel from the pagans based all their shit on it, but the pagans had it right, you know, with Easter, it was just like, uh, yeah, they drank hemp beer, which is just crazy. In this day and age, with all marijuana legalization going on, how come nobody's fucking making hemp beer yet, they were making it two or three thousand years ago, I'm telling you, that's a fucking money maker nobody's tapped in on yet, and we need to do it. Anybody got big capital out there, or fucking business, let's, let's, let's make a Josh Reeves global reality hemp beer. And we'll get all fuckered up on that stuff on fucking Easter and fuck like bunnies and take fucking psych, uh, psychedelic mushrooms, which are enhanced when you add a, a, an MAO inhibitor to it, which chocolate is. So there's your chocolate eggs and your chocolate bunnies. This shit is all about fucking. But back to uh, back to the <laughs> back to the Valentine's Day thing. Same thing there. I draw your name out of a box, and guess what? We fuck. Oh, there ain't fucking nothing to... That's it. There's. I mean, you... It sounded like women are like... From what I was reading, women are were bound to this thing. It's incredible. So, you know, you don't want to bitch and piss and moan and say, Oh, Christmas is not what it's... No, what, no, not now. What is supposed to be about Memorial Day? People are out shooting fireworks and, and grilling and getting drunk. They should be remembering the dead who died in wars. Well, I could just as easily, you know, cry and bitch and moan every fucking time Valentine's Day comes around. I fucking hate Valentine's Day. I hate any of these fucking Catholic holidays. Every time Valentine's Day, you know what's what I'm going to do? I'm going to start doing that. I'm going to go on fucking mega rants next year when Valentine's Day comes around. I'm going to go mega rants. I'm going to post all kinds of shit on Facebook. I don't want to be like, you know, all you motherfuckers always talking about all these holidays not being what they used to be, and we need to get back to that. Well, then I'm going to say that about Valentine's Day. I draw your name out of a box, ho, and we fuck. That's just all there is to it. That's the way they did it back then. No oh, ifs, ands, or buts. Valentine's Day, women put their names in a box, and if you drew their name out, you fucked her. Didn't matter if she didn't want to fuck you or anything else, you did it. Which I guess was just a lead up to a month or a month and a half later with the other, again, pagan fertility ritual with Easter, Ostara, and all that stuff. Same thing there. People just got all fuckered up on weed and alcohol and fucking took mushrooms and ate chocolate to enhance it and just fucked like bunnies. And that's where the bunnies came in at. Anyway. I, I I didn't mean to go on a rant right here out of, out of right out of the gates on you tonight, but uh, I just got so so sick of just the whiny crybabies about everything. Like fuck, man. I I really I saw somebody going on a rant because somebody was popping fireworks on Memorial Day. That's not what this is supposed to be about. Well, how do you know they're not celebrating? I mean, first off, you don't know they're not celebrating. Everybody celebrates in their own way. How do you know that person's not celebrating a, a family member that died in World War II and popping firecrackers? I mean, why does, why does celebrating someone's life always have to be sad and down and depressing? You know, like a fucking Irish, man, when they when they got it right. When, some, when somebody dies, the Irish don't fucking cry and weep and moan. Those motherfuckers get pissed drunk. And talk about, I, I remember when Laddie pissed his pants in the third grade. You know, whatever. They talk about fucking shit that they remember about that person. And why that person, you know, just things that it's just, it's a celebration of that person's life. It's not, I mean, I just get so sick of this. 
I mean, why is it a holiday? You know, if if it's going to be a day where where everybody's down and depressed, you can be down. I mean, that's that's the other fucking four days of the week when you're at work or at your job or whatever else. You get a fucking three day weekend or whatever, man. Yeah, you're supposed to be partying it up. I mean, same thing with the 4th of July. I didn't, I mean, fuck, dude, 4th of July. Come on. Celebrating our independence from England? No. You get drunk and you barbecue. That's it. Even Christmas, you know, you can even trace those origins back. They were fucking doing doing mushrooms and, I mean, where do you think the whole fucking stockings over the fireplace thing came from it's hey it's crazy if you go and look at some like old um if you go and look at old christmas decorations i remember my great grandmother had some my grandmother might have had a few too that she may they have been inherited or whatever i don't know but a lot of the older christmas decorations specifically ones i think they cut it off at maybe about the early 60s or so on that probably anything from before the early 60s on but you could find stuff but back then there were a lot of old school Christmas decorations that had the red and white Anamania muscaria mushrooms, which is part of what that's based on because that's what they would do. The whole St. Nick thing and all that. They would go out and gather these mushrooms on the 24th or whatever, right? Christmas Eve, they go out and gather the mushrooms. Well, if you pick these mushrooms, right? They're fucking, you know, they're, they're wet. They've got to be dried out before you can consume them to get fucked up. And Anamania muscaria mushrooms are, slightly poisonous um so if you ever come across those like the the red and white alice and alice in wonderland mushrooms you come out if you come across those in the wild ever be smart enough not to just eat those motherfuckers because they are in fact poisonous. but with that said if you know what you're doing you can actually boil those down and boil them to a certain point uh where you can get fucked up on them uh and uh that's why you see a lot of these early, yeah a lot of the old christmas decorations had the red and white mushrooms on them because you'd hang them on your, in your stocking, in your sock over the fireplace and dry them out. And when you got up the next morning, you got a Christmas surprise waiting on you. Oh, look, our mushrooms are dried out. You fucking eat those, you trip balls with your family. Can you imagine that? I'm glad that's kind of gone. I don't know about all that. You know what I'm saying? I love my family and everything, but I don't want to fucking trip balls with them for four or five hours on the fucking... Nah, that's not cool. No tell what kind of shit would come out of that. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I could get ugly real quick. It could turn into a bad trip on you in no time. Dead relatives start showing up and shit, too. <laughs> oh, I really uh, I really enjoyed seeing Grandpa at Christmas yesterday. Mom, you know Grandpa's been dead for 15 years, right? <laughs> but he was here. Yeah, I know, fucking know. I saw him, too. But goddamn, let's not bring it up. Shit. <laughs> It's, uh, I'm sorry. I I just really I had to I had to rant about because the, the thing about it is, um, when you're somebody like me, you know what that fucking that that whatever ho- holiday whatever it is it meant fuck all to me. And to be honest with you, just another fucking day for me. I don't have weekends and weeks weekends. My my days are just a long continuous string of fucking days that never end. That started. In September 2007, when I started this show, and it just continued on. It's a never-ending string of fucking, you know, there's no day off for me, no no holiday for me, no fucking vacation or vacation pay for me or holiday time. None of that. It's just a non, a, one continuous string of days where I'm fucking working and looking on this shit. And uh, I don't think I get enough credit for the fact that it hasn't driven me completely batshit nuts yet. <laughs> I guess some would probably argue that and beg to differ, but really, no, it hasn't yet. And I think that's one of my greatest accomplishments. I really do. It has not driven me completely batshit crazy yet, but, you know, I've got a good handle on reality, but at, at, now I do. I mean, when I was young, I was fucking, I was fucking wild as an Indian, you know. But uh, anyway, wanted to rant on that, wanted to talk about that. I get it's just, The next person... That I come across is all I'm going to say on this. The, the next person I come across 
I got to tell you. Because I had mercy on him this time because it kind of got me thinking about what I've been talking about here. The next time I come across one of these fuckos talking about, oh, it's probably what's, what, what's the next one coming up? Fourth of July, right? We've got about a month, you know, a little over a month. Ouch, which means I have another birthday coming up, which means I'm going to be turning 42. My birthday's around 4th of July. Oh, good Lord. i tell you what, though. The next motherfucker. I'll be watching. I'll be watching the 4th of July. <coughs> but the next motherfucker. I see going off about that this holiday shit ain't what it's supposed to be. Yeah, no shit, Sherlock. None of them are. The next one, though. Next motherfucker I see. They're gonna get the they're gonna get the stick. Oh, I'm gonna let them have it. I am gonna let them have it. And you can bet your ass I'm gonna go off about tripping balls, chocolate bunnies. I pull your name out of a box, we fuck, and all the rest of it, I'm telling you. All right. We've got uh, quite a bit of news to get in here into here for you tonight on the show. I want to thank everybody who tuned in to my New live Saturday night show. Uh, now that we have brought back the global reality stream. Now, uh, in case people are, have been wondering, I won't be, none of the new shows, none of this with the stream is going to affect the current state of this show uh, as it is now uh, at all. If you want to hear the new shows, you're going to have to get a membership. That's the way it is. I won't be playing the new shows on the uh on the stream, there'll be classic shows. Some of the audio books will be on there. And you'll also be able to hear the Saturday night, the new live Saturday night show that I've uh, just started. And again, thanks everybody for tuning in over there. It was really fun. Uh, it's really cool to do something completely different. And, not, uh, and actually, that's not true. It's, it wasn't fucking completely different. Not at all. But uh, I think just the fact that we're, I, I'm not doing news and this is more exclusively news and sort of certain kind of topics. And over there, there's these kind of topics, but also um, getting into stuff that the listeners want to hear about and getting into stuff about movies and having the movie of the week. And uh, we're having different little segments over there, you know, the movie of the week and I talk about a movie and then the album of the week. And I'll pick a different album every week that I like and play a song from it. Um, yeah, I, th I, I, really, I really enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun with it and uh if you didn't get to hear the show live you can hear it in the archives for the regular global reality show so if you get a membership for this show that show will automatically be included in your subscription and uh be there waiting for you to hear so keep that in mind for sure and if you haven't gotten your membership yet we have extended the special that we've got going on so now's a great time to do that I uh, mentioned it last time on the show. We're going to extend that until this coming Friday. If you want to get a membership, if you purchase the uh, one-year membership, which is $80, you will automatically be upgraded to a two-year membership for that price. Um, and a lot of people who right now are doing the $10 a month thing, where you you know, you know can do that way, where you pay $10. Sometimes it's just easier for certain people to do it that way, and I get that. That's why we have that option. Um, but over two years paying $10 a month, you're looking at $220 for the total, you know, after two years or whatever, whereas you can sign up right now for a one year membership for $80 and you will get the show and the new show and all the archives and stuff, the shows that are already in there for the next two years. And you don't have to worry about resubscribing or anything else. So, uh, if you want to catch that deal still, I'm extending it until this Friday. So. Go and get yourself one. There will be uh, links and everything uh, in the video. You can also find it at the subscribe button in the top right-hand corner of the page at theglobalreality.com. I will have a new website for Midnight in Texas, my new Saturday night show, midnightintexas.com. That will be coming very soon as well. And uh, until I get the new Global Reality website done in a few months and get that thing all rehashed and, and redone, uh, the midnightintexas.com website will probably be a good location because it'll be updated more regularly and all that stuff. So definitely check that out and uh, be sure and join us 
coming up this coming Saturday. I got people already getting their uh, topics, things they want to hear me talk about. I can already tell you this coming Saturday night show is going to be really good too. So um, be sure and go and add us on Facebook. We have a Facebook for Midnight in Texas. And uh, the little picture you see, it'll be a picture of a microphone for the profile picture. So, you know, if you see something else that says Midnight in Texas, you don't know which one is it. That's it. The one with the microphone. Give us an ad. And uh, that's where you can find all the links to listen to the live stream. And uh, the live stream will be up and running and playing. It is up and running. And we'll be playing archive shows and stuff like that. But as I said, the newer shows, uh, you'll still have to only, you'll only be able to hear those still in the members archive so again get your subscription for that today this is our fundraising week as well for the show we have to raise 100 percent of our operating cost goal by friday ladies and gentlemen no later than 3 p.m we don't have any grace grace days we've had those before we don't have any of that this time so uh please get your subscript your uh, uh contributions in now let's not wait until the last minute and uh we've got a lot of Great deals going on for that. I want to tell you about a lot of perks. There's there's all there's perks that are already available on the campaign page, so be sure and check those out also. But there's some additional stuff that I've added as well. Um, if you contribute $100, you will get any three downloads from the download shop. You'll get your name or any name of your choice in the special thanks credits of the Spellcasters Volume 2, which I'm planning on having out before... I don't care what it takes. I'm going to have it. My, my birthday's the 1st of July, so I will have it out before then. I'm looking at about the end of June. It should be totally done. Uh, but again, that's, <laughs> that's pending we don't fucking go under before then. Uh, I've, just, I've been working so hard on that this month. I've uh, I got the new show launched. I've got the new uh, Shoutcast stream up and running. It's taken a lot of work to do all these things. And, uh, I mean, I'm finally getting in the home stretch of this film. So we cannot come up short on our operating costs this week, folks. We need everybody to pitch in. If you haven't pitched in in a long time, now's the time. Uh, if you uh, have never pitched in before, this is a great time to start. So if you pitch in, a, so everybody contributes $100, any three downloads from the download shop, uh, your name or a name of your choosing it can be fucking. Dick Jones had an OCP. I don't know, whatever. Um, you'll get your name in the special thanks of uh, Spellcaster Volume 2. And you will also get uh, a year added to your archive membership. So if you have a three month deal or a six month deal or, you know, any, or a one year deal, already in the archive membership or you sign up for one you'll get an additional year added to that for your $100 donation so in other words if you bought the one year membership right that you will get an additional year for two years for the price of, of 80 bucks for the one year you heard it correctly you will get an additional one year added to that, so it'll be three years if you contribute a hundred dollars. Or if you already have a three month one or you know you want to extend it or a six month one or a year, you'll get an additional one year added to that for a one hundred dollar contribution. If you contribute two hundred dollars, you will get two years you get all the previous things I mentioned, the name and the credits and downloads, but you'll also get two years added to your archive membership. If you contribute $300, you will get everything aforementioned, but you will get your membership bumped up to a lifetime membership, ladies and gentlemen, which we sell in the subscription store for 500 bucks so everybody contributes 300 you're going to get all those previous things but you're going to get your membership updated and upgraded to a lifetime membership subscription for your 300 contribution 
If you contribute $400 or more, this is the highest one. This is the last one. If you contribute $400 or more, you will get your membership upgraded to, you have to have a pre-existing membership for me to do it. I can't just give you a membership if you don't already have one. Uh, you got to remember that with these deals because I can't, they, they changed the software like a year or so ago and I can't do that. They used to allow me to create new memberships for people. I, I they, they, they changed it. I can't do that anymore, but I can add to your membership indefinitely if you already purchased one. So if you contribute four hundred dollars or more, you'll get your all the aforementioned things, and you'll get your uh, thing upgraded to the lifetime. But you'll also get a one-on-one, thirty-minute Skype session with yours truly. I'm, I'm, I'm holding it tight at thirty minutes, so it's got to be thirty minutes. Some people try to sometimes people try to finagle me on these things. I'm running a fucking timer, and when the timer's up, that's it, because. Uh, la- I, you know, last time I did one, I, I, you know, I don't know. I don't want to talk shit, but I kind of got finagled a little bit on it. I ain't going to lie to you. Because normally I charge 500 bucks for a 30-minute Skype session. And uh, last time I did one, they actually gave me less than what I usually take for it. And it was like an hour and a half long. So I'm cutting it off at that. Uh, I, from now on, it's 30 minutes. That's it. But anyway, um, we got those perks, and there's all kinds of other perks that we have available. Uh, we might have a gym and mineral package as well for the highest contributor. We'll see. But uh, just continue to check all our Facebook pages. We've got a shit ton of them now. All right, so many fucking Facebook pages now. we got the uh, Global Reality Radio Network Facebook page. You can find all the links to listen to the live stream up there, too. We have the Josh Reese Filmmaker Talk Show Host Explorer page. We've got uh, Let There Be Rocks. That's my Gym and Mineral page. And there's all kinds of new stuff we added up there. There's all kinds of stuff on sale. That's another great way to support our work is to go buy some gems and minerals and crystals. And we got all kinds of stuff. I've got a lot more stuff I haven't put up on the page yet. But I, uh, a lot of the more stuff that I haven't put up on the page is more, I don't really, it's more higher end items. And I don't know, man. I just don't see somebody buying a fucking $3,000 tourmaline crystal the size of your fist off of fucking facebook i just don't see it happening but i do have one i got a fucking tourmaline log the size of a goddamn yule log too black to black which is huge and it's like 400 bucks i've got a this massive uh amazonite on smoky quartz specimen i mean this thing could be i don't even know how much these things could be worth three or four thousand dollars probably Came out of an old collection. Got that for like fifteen hundred. So I've got some, high, you know, I've got some higher end stuff. But most of a lot of the stuff I only put the some of the more affordable stuff on on there. But I, you know, I can get anything, you know, whatever you want. If you whatever kind of crystals, gems, minerals, whatever you're looking for, I can get whatever. You, but here's the thing with that: don't waste my fucking time. Serious inquiries only. If you're want, if you're interested in me, you know, getting something for you that I don't already have or whatever. Uh, do not contact me unless you, you're ready to buy and ready to purchase because I take this shit seriously. And if you tell me that you are interested in purchasing something, you want something specific that I don't have, I have suppliers all over the world at different mines and different places I get stuff to, and I have to take time out of my day and to go and try. I had a person do this to me recently, so I'm bringing this up. Um. I mean, for weeks, this guy was emailing me fucking, I'm putting him on blast. Yeah, I should I should give out his fucking email address is what I fucking should do. He pissed me off that bad. You know, acting like I fucking got time to waste. Look, you know fucking window shoppers, all right? This guy wanted, wanted a couple of very specific things. I took the time out of my fucking busy-ass schedule to contact all these fucking suppliers and track all this shit down for him. He claimed it was exactly what he wanted. Then he first he says, okay, well, I, no, I don't get paid until Friday. First he was like, I want to buy right now. Then he's like, I don't get paid until Friday. Okay, whatever. Fine. No problem. Friday gets here, and guess what? Oh, I can't do it now. Oh, this whatever. I'm like, dude, I, I really I said, fuck you. Don't ever fucking contact me fucking again. I, that's when, I can't fucking stand it. I want to buy people wasting my fucking time. That's one of the worst fuck, especially 
when I go out of my way, right? And I went out of my fucking way to try and get this guy exactly what he fucking wanted. And he bricked on me like a fucking asshole. So, um, but with that said, you know, if there's specific kinds of crystals you're looking for or whatever it may be, you want a certain thing and I don't have it, you know, I can probably track it down to you. I just need to know, you know, a lot, a lot of things people, a lot of times people don't even know what they want. They'll just be like, oh, I want this and this. Well, you know, do you want it rough? Do you want it polished? Do you want it cut? Do you want it uncut? There's a lot of factors in this stuff, but, uh, Anyway, I'll be putting more stuff up on the uh, Let There Be Rocks Facebook page this week. There's a lot of new stuff added there, lots of great deals. Go and check it out and get yourself some stuff there because that helps us out as well. Um, but God damn, just don't waste my time. Man, it pisses me off. Tell you what. But yeah, if you are interested in, in some of the higher end items and stuff like that, you can, uh, just shoot me an email, globalrealityshow at gmail.com. Because uh, oftentimes, like I said, I do only put up, you know, some of the stuff. I don't oftentimes put all the higher end stuff. But I do have a few pieces that are in the uh, the higher end echelons and stuff. And uh, like I said, if I don't have it, I can get it as long as you got the cash. But uh, my prices, uh, really, if you if you look at my pro my prices are well below. I can get stuff way cheaper than a lot of other people, and sometimes I can't get stuff. I can't certain things, you know. It just you gotta pay what the whatever the market price is for it. But I've I've gone to these gem and mineral shows and gone to. I mean, literally every time I go to a gem and mineral show, this is not bullshit. Every time I go to one. I always walk away disappointed because none of them have any of the stuff I have. It's like going to a, it's like going to, you know, anything to shop and have just nothing like it's going to go to a flea market and just nothing. Everything there is just crap. That's how it is when I go to these general mineral shows. It's like none of these guys have anything like I have. I mean, I've got I got some re some stuff that's really really rare. I mean, uh, and a lot of the jewelry pieces and stuff we've gotten. They're totally, totally one of a kind. I have different people that make stuff, and oftentimes I'll get the stones, and I'll send the stones to uh, people I know that do jewelry and stuff and have them do some stuff, but uh, all our pieces are one of a kind, and there's been many times that I've gotten stuff that we've sold that I've never gotten in again. So definitely check that out. I don't mention that enough or talk about that enough here on the, on the show and wanted to bring it up because... Uh, we do have uh, a few loyal customers out there in our listening audience. I want to thank all those people for being loyal customers. And uh, yeah, if you're, you know, if you're interested in that kind of, I mean, any, you know, I can get uh, cut stones and uh, all kinds of different stuff. So let there be rocks, Facebook, check it out. Let's get into the news tonight. Right out of the gates, coming out with one that, uh, I mean, this ties right into my work, ties right into the Spellcasters, Volume 2. Photographs taken in the scene of Kurt Cobain's suicide will forever remain sealed following a new court ruling in Seattle. Journalist Richard Lee described in court documents as a conspiracy theorist who believes that Mr. Cobain was murdered. Originally filed suit against the city of Seattle and its police department in 2014. Having researched the Nirvana frontman's death for years and even hosting a public access TV show called Now See It Person to Person, Kurt Cobain was murdered. Lee sought access to pictures taken of Cobain's body under Washington State's Public Records Act. However, Superior Court Judge Teresa Doyle threw out the case in 2015 after determining Lee had improperly served the lawsuit to the city and failed to give officials adequate time to address his public records request. That sounds like the biggest bunch of horse shit I've ever heard in my life. What? I mean, what a blatant abuse of power. Listen to that shit. The Superior Court judge threw out the case in 2015 after determining that Lee had improperly 
How do you? She he, she had imp, he had improperly served the lawsuit to the city and failed to give officials adequate time to address his public records request. What does that even mean? How can uh, I don't even get how that's possible? If you put in a request to public records, right? How long it takes for them to address your request is up to them, right? How can you throw out a case and say that the person who asked for, uh, had a request made to public records, didn't give them adequate time to address it? That doesn't even make any sense. And improperly served the law, uh, served a lawsuit to the city? The, I mean, they're bricking him. And, of course, we know why they're bricking him. Because you had, listen, this shit... I'm telling you, because, uh, you know, a part of the film is dedicated to this case, because I've got shit nobody's gotten to yet. And I'll tell you why that is also. It's not 100% just because I'm a diligent researcher. It's about half and half. I'll get to that. Listen. This was not some spur of the moment. The, the, the murder of Kurt Cobain was not some spur of the moment fucking thing that was just done by a bunch of rookies. And a lot of these researchers, I'm not going to name names, but a lot of these so-called researchers and so-called people who have been investigating the death of Kurt Cobain. I know it sounds far-fetched. A lot of these people, just like we see in, in any of the other stuff I've exposed, folks, be it Alex Jones or any of these gatekeepers, the Kurt Cobain murder has its own conspiracy gatekeepers. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a fact. And they are complicit with the people that planned and executed the murder. They are not interested in the coming out with the truth, because if they are, it would have already come out by now. So that's why I said, you know, I've got stuff in here on the, the death of Kurt Cobain that nobody's come to yet. And it's probably about, again, it's probably about 50-50. Probably 50% of that is, yeah, nobody's come out with it yet, because again, there's stuff I found that ain't, I mean, a lot of stuff. There's so much stuff in this film, folks, that is not on the internet. Like, if I told you one of these topics and said, go look this up right now, you could go and look it up on the internet and you would not find any information on it. But that's all going to change when this movie comes out and it's just going to be like every, all, you know, all the other stuff I've covered and talked about for years. It'll just become part of the conspiracy no one's culture, but and everybody will start using it as accepted fact, but it'll, you know, probably will never get back to who actually originally put this stuff out. But those who, who, who need to know will know. Um, but this is, no, you know, I, again, I found a lot of stuff that nobody else has found, but the problem with that is, is that these so-called investigators and whatnot, a lot of them are, are complicit. Otherwise, this stuff would have already come out. Again, this this was not some, the death of Kirk Cobain, his murder was not some spur of the moment, quick. This was planned. It sounds insane. There were people at the highest levels involved in this stuff. We're talking military. This had been planned, I believe, years in advance. I mean, if you ever watch, there's that, there's one of those, Kirk Cobain conspiracy documentaries. I can't remember which one it was, but it's, um, I guess it was one of these guys that was one of uh, Courtney Love's boyfriends in the 80s or something. Anyway, they're at his house and he has a bunch of her old writings and much of her old shit. I guess it was a notebook or something or a letter. I can't remember what it was. But she, he pulls it out. And it's from like the 80s, right? And it's like like a list to do list for Courtney Love, and it says, um, 
marry a rock star and take his money and become friends with Michael Stipe. Which she did become friends with Michael Stipe. She did all those things. This is like the 80s. She was like she was already playing this shit out. And of course, what I'm going to be showing with her dad, the stuff with her dad and how her dad was the CIA go-between um, providing the LSD from the CIA to the Grateful Dead. How she even appeared as a child on a Grateful Dead album cover. The connection with the Grateful Dead to Scientology. The connection with Courtney Love to Scientology. The connection to another person involved, which is really going to shock people when I show people <laughs> name this person. For their involvement with the death of Kurt Cobain is really going to shock some people. But the evidence is even going to shock you even more when I lay it out. The reason why this this Superior Court judge is throwing out this lawsuit because because the uh, the city of Seattle has as much to lose as Courtney Love does with the truth of this stuff coming out. Because I I'm I, I mean this is just assumption. You got to understand some of this stuff is assumption, but it's educated assumption. Uh, my assumption is I guess because of her connections to the CIA through her dad, but somehow, man. She had the power to not only cover up this murder, but she also had the power to get the Seattle Police Department and people within the city government to be complicit in this stuff. Now, if she was just some groupie, junkie, wannabe, nobody... This would never happen. And that's exactly why his murder has been able to be perpetuate, perpetuated as a suicide all these years. Because nobody really knows the true story on Courtney Love and her connections and how her connections with her father and how that connects to the, to the much broader scope of this stuff. You know, everybody just thinks she's just some dumb... Junkie, no, man. She's She is a very, very intelligent, highly manipulative, mind-controlled, I mean, CIA as you can get. She's a, not only that, but she's also, as I talked about previously, a designated uh drug provider to celebrities and everything through the CIA, just like her dad was, just like her dad was. We, we've talked about many, many, for many times, especially I've talked about with Jones and Alex Jones's dad and you know how they were grooming him for years. Now they're grooming Alex Jones. Alex Jones already got his kids up there. This stuff's hereditary, man. They threw it, they do it through the years. If they're, if the parents are assets, oftentimes the children become assets as well. Doyle added that releasing the images would be highly offensive to a reasonable person. Lee appealed the ruling last year, and Cobain's widow, Courtney Love, and daughter, Frances Bean Cobain, filed documents and testified to Block Lee's case. Now, as the Blast reports, the Washington Appellate Court has handed down a judgment in favor of Cobain's family. The ruling ensures that the images from four rolls of film taken at the scene in 1994 and developed by the Seattle Police Department in 2014 will likely never be seen by the public. In a declaration submitted to the response to Lee's original suit, Francis Bean said, releasing these photographs would physically endanger me and my mother. What? <laughs> it, I mean, ladies and gentlemen, if I have ever heard an admission of guilt in my life, that's it. Releasing these photographs would physically, yeah, physically endanger me and my right because they got the fuck. Look, you know, we've already seen some of them. What this is, I mean, of course, we've for years we've already seen a lot of the uh, crime scene details and and just what we've been allowed to see has been 
you know, no pun intended, lack of a better term, us, the smoking gun. I mean, the shell being ejected out of the gun on the opposite end of the gun as it should have been. Somebody put that gun in his mouth, pulled the trigger, and then put it, turned the gun around and made it look like a suicide, like he was holding the gun himself. But what they didn't do is they didn't move the shell when it ejected out to the proper side. Had he shot himself, the, the shell would have ejected out on the right-hand side of his body. But instead, the shell ejected out on the left-hand side of, of his body, as it would have been if someone even would have put the gun in their mouth and pulled the trigger. No, no powder residue on his hands. He hadn't fired a gun. Had like seven times the lethal limit of heroin in his body. The releasing of these photographs, especially the additional ones that we haven't seen, again, we've seen a handful of images, but just with that, those handful of images, we've seen it's enough for us to, under, to know beyond any shadow of a doubt that he was murdered, not I mean, he didn't commit suicide. But this was supposed to be images from four rolls, a full four rolls of film, so probably hundreds, of, you know, or at least a hundred photographs. But listen to that statement, man. Releasing these photographs would physically endanger me and my mother. How would photographs being released of, of somebody dead physically endanger anyone? The only way it's possible for photographs to physically endanger anyone is for the truth, what we already know, that his death was not a suicide, it was a murder. The proof is in those pictures. I mean, clearly. A handful of images from the four rolls of film in question were indeed released in the months prior to Lee's initial suit though none were of Cobain's body. Conspiracy theorists have for years speculated the rock star's death was murder and not suicide. Despite officials ruling it so on numerous occasions, a documentary exploring the conspiracy theories entitled Soaked in Bleach was released in 2014 around the 20th anniversary of Cobain's death. Well, here's the other thing. The autopsy report. That's the other thing. That's the big thing. Um... We've never been able to see the autopsy report. And when I say Courtney had everybody on the payroll, up to including the people who you know responded, were the first responders, everybody. I mean everybody. She had the cops on the payroll. She had the mayor, everybody on the payroll. She even had the fucking coroner, dude. She had the coroner on the payroll. The coroner on the pay on the payroll was one of her fuck the guy who did was in charge of doing the Kurt Cobain autopsy, ladies and gentlemen, was one of Courtney Love's fuck buddies that she sold heroin to. He's now dead. You know, just like JFK or these other things, I mean, a lot of the people who, you know, were uh, involved directly are dead now. Uh, I mean, it's... This was not just some random, this was a long con. She had this planned probably from the beginning, and I think, to be honest with you, I think it could have been anybody. I think the fact that it ended up being Kurt Cobain, as silly as it sounds, was really just his fucking bad luck. When you look at that thing, like I talked about, that you know the thing the boyfriend had in the eighties, where I'm going to marry a rock star and take all his money and be, become friends with Michael Stipe, dude. Again, you look at the hereditary thing. We, this may not even be, I mean, I clearly, I think, I believe she's under mind control. I had a couple of run-ins with Courtney. I did. Back in there, I had a couple of, I had a couple of run-ins with her. I may have told the story here before. Yeah. I had a couple of run-ins with her. Um, and what's crazy, I think I've talked about it here on the show before. What's crazy is that it kind of, you know, it makes more sense now 
after I've learned what I've learned about Scientology and the Thetan stuff and and the whole shapeshifter thing, what that really is, and, and now that I've learned about, um, you know, these people's ability to be able to see things, you know, messed, matter, energy, space, time, you know, beyond, past, present, future, they see it all at certain levels. And I've talked about that encounter I had with Alex Jones, I talked about in Spellcasters Volume 1. I had a, a very strange similar encounter like that with Courtney Love back in the day uh, at uh, at concert. At, yeah, well, back this 1994, 